Let's look at the digestive system in general, also called gastrointestinal tract in medical field and medical profession always talk about GI, abbreviated, not 100% correctly, but hey, overview. Look at the organs of the digestive tract, pause the video, study a little bit. The function of GI is functions are ingestion, digestion, secretion, absorption, and elimination. Ingestion is food goes into digestive tract and gets chewed. Digestion is done mechanically and chemically. We also secrete enzymes and digestive juices into digestive tract. Absorption from the digestive tract into the bloodstream and lymph done actively. I will elaborate more on that topic a little bit later. Elimination is done through the rectum and anus. Okay, in, again, ingestion. So you put the food into the, your mouth and chew it 33 times until uh, it's a consistency of toothpaste. Digestion, mechanical, through teeth and stomach muscles. Keep in mind, stomach muscles are not as strong as teeth. You have teeth in your mouth for a very good reason, chew your food. Digestion also is chemical by the means of enzymes. Secretion, enzymes that we secrete into digestive tract are lipases, proteases, amylases, nuclei, aces. Remem important to remember, I will be talking in the next presentation about them. And uh, fluids, bile and pancreatic juices. Absorption done through the wall of digestive tract into the blood and lymph. Elimination is again rectum and anus. The digestive system organs, the gastrointestinal tract itself and accessory structures. The tract is mouth, oral cavity, oropharynx, esophagus, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, rectum, and anus. Accessory structures, teeth, tongue, salivary gland, liver, gallbladder, and pancreas. When you talk to medical professional, you always have to describe the pain or symptoms that you have in certain areas. And the areas of abdomen divide into nine regions. Look at them and try, try to memorize epigastric area, umbilical area, and suprapubical area. Often medical professor, professionals, when they write charts, they refer to quadrants to simplify the matter. And they write right upper quadrant, right lower quadrant, left lower quadrant is LLQ for abbreviation. Also, shameless to medical professionals, mix and match. They may write that patient has right lower quadrant, pain and epigastric pain. The reason the abdomen divided into that areas is because the organs are there inside. So when you say that patient has pain in epigastric area means right here, means they refer into the stomach. If they, if they write um, right low quadrant pain means that organs that are located here, small intestine, large intestine, ovaries also here. So ascending colon. Okay, so um, now we are going to a drawing board. People who subscribe to my channel know that I love to draw and um, get used to that. The joints are very simple. Here is your esophagus. Here is your stomach. Small intestine is right here. Then large intestine is this one. And the rectum is here. This is the mouse and teeth, food is getting into the mouth, is broken down by teeth in the small particles. And those small particles end up in the stomach. Stomach will produce hydrochloric acid to break down further this food. And this food is broken down into smaller particles. Here in small intestine, we have pancreas, P stays for pancreas. In the right 
upper quadrant, liver is located. Liver and gallbladder. And liver and gallbladder drain here into small intestine. And under effect of juices from pancreas and from the liver, food is broken down into smaller, smaller particles. All the digestive tract lined by cells called enterocytes. Those cells are very active. That's how they look when they are normal. Almost nothing, no food that arrive here into small intestine will go between two cells. Always the food will get first incorporated into the cell and then get out of the cell into the bloodstream. And here's the bloodstream. Or into lymphatic tissues. From here, that food from here get into the cells, and this is your individual cell. This is nucleus, and this is the cell membrane. And the cell could be a skin cell, cardiac cell, any kind of cell. So when I talked about active transport, absorption of the food, I meant that food goes into enterocytes, and only that then get released into the bloodstream or lymphatic tissues. Particles of the food that are not broken down get excreted out of the digestive tract. You can see that the whole purpose of the digestive tract, take food in, break it down, absorb, and whatever is not broken down and not absorbed, get excreted. That's it guys for today. Yeah.